Today we're going to be working on a 2010 Camaro SS. Taking out this factory radio and replacing it with a Kenwood Double Den. Using a pack audio dash kit with wiring harness. This is a little video just to show what it looks like before. We change everything. Also, this vehicle does have integrated steering wheel controls from the factory and also has Boston Acoustic stock speakers with amplifier. So this is a pretty premium sound system in comparison to some of the others. This is the unit that we're going to be using from Pack Audio for the dash kit and wiring harness. And this is the double den we're going to be using, the DDX276BT. We're going to be installing this in the 2010 Camaro SS. By snapping up, basically you can see we're snapping up all these clips right here to get this off. And then we're going to move this transmission selector all the way to the back. So, we should be able to pull this out of here, and then there's going to be the very back, right down there, there is a clip. You can see my hand, it's right here. So. That's the clip that we're going to pull out right here. This is the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take off these two seven millimeters right here, which will remove this whole entire housing right here. Now that we've removed these two seven mils down here, we're going to pull this unit out, which will probably not be the easiest thing since it's never been out. There you go. Okay. And this whole piece is gonna come out like so. On the back of this unit right here is a plug which plugs in directly to right here. So you'll want to unplug that when you're taking this whole, basically this whole entire cluster piece off which is right here, okay? Now we're going to start removing all the seven millimeters all the way around here to basically take this whole entire unit out right here. So we're gonna pull this unit out and we're gonna have lots of plugs to unplug on the back of here. Um, you want to be careful and make sure you don't break any of them. So here's the plugs. Basically your XM and antenna plugs right there that we unplugged from the back of the unit. And then your main plug right here which comes down with this large piece right here. You just click down on this and this whole piece will just come down and that's what pulls this out. Now we're gonna get ready to start doing the wiring. One thing I would definitely recommend on the back side of this dash is right here on this cube that's sticking out. There's two, there's a seven mil and a seven mil here. There's a big cube here that's sticking out. Cut that out with a Dremel, whatever you can, get rid of that because it's gonna cause problems when you go to stick the double dead in there. Just need to let you guys know that because it will cause a problem. Make sure you remove it or cut it out. This is everything that we're going to be working with. This is the brain. This is the Kenwood harness and parking brake for the actual Kenwood radio itself. This is your antenna adapter, which the blue wire has to be wired up to antenna. This is gonna be your main harness, aux, and this is your secondary harness. It's gonna be your chime box, and this is going to be rear view camera. So this is all the parts that you're gonna to need to make it work, and I'll get it all wired up and show you kind of where everything goes. Just to give you guys a brief update, we started wiring this in. We plugged this into the vehicle connector side. You wanna make sure that you do your radio select beforehand 
so that you can plug this in. I'm on an amplified Boston acoustic, so I want to go on this side with my plug. Sorry about this mess, we're going to clean it up, but I have everything wired up from the Kenwood over to this harness side. Every single thing is standard. Your red, your yellow, your black. This is connected for the ground for the parking brake. Everything's exactly labeled. It even has the remote wire right here that's labeled, so you have to connect that so that you have audio output. The only thing that's different is you do have an extra power and ground that I connected into here that comes over from this side. So you have two powers and two grounds. Everything else is standard. This wire right here wires up to your power antenna wire coming off of your Kenwood harness that wires up to the actual antenna adapter. I will show you how everything else goes in as well. Here's how the brackets mount up. Got those bolted down. We might have to adjust the front to back, but at least we'll be able to put in there and see how she looks. And this is the factory unit we're gonna be taking apart and transferring over to the new aftermarket unit. We're first gonna start by taking all these screws out to remove this piece so that we can start taking everything off of it to go onto this. Okay, there's three different types of screws, tiny, shorter and then long. I labeled them on the back so you could tell which were which. Where the S is, is for the shorter ones. Right here and here. The tiny ones go here and here. The rest of them are all the longs. So I made this diagram so that you guys could see where it goes because you have to transfer a lot of this stuff over to the new unit. Once you remove this big panel off the back, you're going to find this little connector right here and on each side you're just going to want to take it and pry it up to get this piece off so that we can remove this whole entire black piece off of this circuit board. Now, now that we have this disconnected from this plug right here, let me unplug that. I'm going to go ahead and take these two Phillips screws out to take this piece off of here, off the bottom. Now we're going to start removing these Phillips heads here and keep them separated because they are going to be different than the other ones that we've used. I'm also gonna take these out, but you wanna make sure you keep those because they're all different. Every single screw in this thing is completely different. So here's what we removed. We removed one, two, three, and then one, two down here. Same thing on this side. Um, one, two, three, and then one, and then two. These two right here are longer on both and then these front pieces will pop off. Be very careful with those because we're gonna have to take those and put them into the new one. The next step is we're gonna remove one, two here, and the same on this side, one and two here. The next step, you're gonna be left with these two plastic pieces that we took out of the other one. You're basically going to completely reassemble them the way you took it out. So you're gonna put these two screws, this is the new piece, we're gonna put the two new screws back in there, the very, very tiny ones, and basically put it back together exactly how you took it apart. Once you get these two screws and these two screws in, you're gonna reassemble these pieces. Be very careful putting them back in. You have to put them back in and get them aligned and then get them to snap into place. Be very gentle when you put them back in. You do not want them to break or snap. Now that we got them snapped into the front, we wanna put these screws especially these two right here and these screws back in to hold everything back into place. We took off two of the white clips that are on the back side of the old unit and put them onto the new unit on the tops. We also plugged this harness into here because that's what's actually gonna plug into the vehicle. Now we're gonna put the four seven millimeters back in to hold the radio in. And then once we get those in, we will install the new dash kit on top. Okay, that is all in there. Now we have our new dash kit that we've completely redone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move the shifter back. plug this white plug here into here and 
want to make sure everything works. Seems to be working. Defrost. Hot or cold. Everything appears to be working. Okay, so we'll get this all snapped in. This is what it looks like installed. Very clean. The fitment is insane nice and clean. The knobs look OEM because they are. Everything kind of just transplants from the old dash kit into this one, just incorporating a double den. So I think it looks really, really nice. I think Pac did a really good job on this dash kit by far. This is a probably the third or fourth I've put in myself and I just think this one looks the best and holds up the best so okay just to update you guys I talked to the technical department at pack audio when you plug into the amplified factory connection and you have the Boston acoustics if you plug into this connection right here it will actually like attune the signal down so it's not very loud it was like maybe 30% of what we had before with the Boston on the stock unit so he said if you plug it into the standard factory connection, it's a full strength signal that goes out. I did that and it made at least 50, 60% difference. So it sounds so much better by doing that. He said the only thing you can run into is if you turn it up too loud, you could damage the amplifier and speakers. So I wanna give you guys an update on that because if not, it does not sound very good when you plug it into this. Now the Bose might be different and the standard audio um, coming out of here will be different, but this with the Boston does not work very good. Just to let you guys know that.